Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our University of Vermont Farmer Training Program webinar today. We have a full agenda, and so I want to get right into it. I'll do some quick introductions. We're going to talk a lot about what is the Farmer Training Program. What is a week on the farm like? Um, what are some of the student perspectives in terms of why they have chosen this program, the real benefits of this program, and what it really is like to be integrated into the six-month program. Some of the course logistics, just how do you sign up, um, where would you live, um, costs, various different things that students ask um, most frequently. And we'll also talk about that application process and deadlines, and we will get to your questions throughout the presentation today. Um, as a few of us have chatted in the chat box already, thank you for sharing where you're from. We'd love to hear where some of our folks um, are joining us from today. And that is your opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation. I'll be monitoring the chat box um, and try to get to as many of your questions as possible. And we'll have opportunity at the end, just in case we haven't answered any of those questions, um, to formally do that. So good morning. My name is Nicole Willier fenton I'm the Content Marketing Manager at University of Vermont's Continuing and Distance Education Department. Joining me today is a wonderful panel of um, Sarah who is our program director and instructor, co-director, you and, and Rachel is the other co-director. Um, and we'll learn a little bit more about um, what it's like to instruct this program, what are the things that students get out of this program, and your background as to why you do this um, yeah. and the passion you have yeah. behind doing this because you're so passionate about this work. And we also have Andrea joining us as well. And Andrea just completed the program, and we're super excited to hear from you as to what it was like. And so absolutely ask questions because she is your best perspective on what it is like to be a student in our incredible farmer training program. And, and I love, um, you can see Andrea's quote here, and we can hear a little bit more about her plans, but she really wants to small, start her own small-scale farm and to complement um, the skills of her own family farming business as well. So there may be many of you joining us today that are thinking about what can I do after this program, and so we'll hear about some of those opportunities as well. So I want to toss that right over to Sarah. So yeah. tell me, when did this program start, and why did this? Why did we start this program here at University of Vermont? Great question. Thanks so much for having us, mm -hmm. Nicole. Um, so this next year is going to be our tenth year, wow. so we're going to have a nice little celebration. So Andrea <laughs> was in our ninth year. You missed the ten-year celebration. Uh, the program was started because, um, actually, Cynthia Beliveau, the, the, the dean, dean of, of continuing at continuing um, in, in distance and, education. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it was her idea to create a program like this, and there's only a couple of programs like this in the entire country where you have a non-credit intensive program based at a university. Yep. So six months full on learning, seed to market, every you know hands-on education, and also the management side behind. Uh, like, how do you actually run a farm? You know, it's not just harvesting and weeding. Um, so she got the idea and collaborated with a bunch of amazing local folks, and mm -hmm. the program was born. Have you been involved in the program since the beginning? This is my sixth year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and tell me about the, the, the course structure and who teaches it. You are co-director with Rachel. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about who are the folks that people learn from. Yeah, so myself and Rachel Stevader, we co-direct the program. I um, focus more on curriculum development, and she focuses more on farm management, mm -hmm. but we overlap all the time, and we are really great next together. And then we have two alumni coming back to teach again, so this will be their third year teaching. Um, so we typically hire alumni. So we have a staff of four, and it's all women. Um, it's been all women for the last two years, mm -hmm. and it will be all women again this coming year. Um, and we bring in over 50 guest lecturers, so people from Agricultural Extension, from here at UVM, we bring in plant and soil scientists, farmers, representatives from agricultural nonprofits. And the curriculum is really, um, you know, 70% of it is in the field. Mm -hmm. So you're actually learning hands on skills mm -hmm. like how do you harvest, how do you weed, right. how do you drive a tractor, how do you fix irrigation? Mm -hmm. That can be really tricky and annoying, right? Uh, but we teach you how to do it efficiently, hopefully. Um, and, you know, so 70% is in the field and 30% is in the classroom. And we have mm -hmm. a bunch of curricular threads, um, including soil fertility management, pest and disease man mm -hmm. management, um, farm financials, business planning, mm -hmm. small scale uh, livestock. And then we also have, um, you know, throughout the whole program, we talk about how is this affecting the environment? Because obviously any form of agriculture is going to have an effect on the environment. Um, so using drip irrigation versus overhead and like what context is it better mm -hmm. to use which, and which is going to be better on the environment? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we also have incorporated a food justice component to the program. We really believe that if you're not looking at racism 
and classism within the food system. Um, you're not looking at the whole. You're not looking yeah. at the whole thing. Yeah. And you know, we farm on Abenaki land, and we need to acknowledge that. Um, so that's been uh, an increasing part of our curriculum. Let's talk about the land for a minute. Um, yeah. I think this is also a unique opportunity that our program um, it works on a 10-acre farm. Yeah. Talk about the, the farm and the diversity of that farm. We've toured it, yeah. um, which is yeah. probably one of the most wonderful things that we get to do <laughs> and see what in action what the students are learning. Yeah. Um, Walk someone through what is the Catamount Farm like and the experience yeah. that they'll have on it. I'm going to step back just for a second. Yeah. So the horticultural farm is um, a 100-acre parcel of land. Honestly, that could... I don't want to give you the amount of ideas, but it's, you know, it's in the middle of housing developments and car dealerships right in South Burlington. So to have this land conserved plays a huge ecological role in that area. It serves so many ecosystem services because there's nature there, there's water infiltration, you know, there's all these things happening that if it's just pavement isn't going to happen. So first there's that. And then, so it's a hundred acres and there's a triple mission of education, research, and, um, and production. And production is the Catamount Farm. So that's a subsection of the yeah. Port Farm, um, a 12-acre piece where we um, grow organic vegetables. There's also um, a non-organic apple orchard and vineyard there. And then we also raise organic um, chickens okay. yep. for meat. Yep. So super lucky to have these seven fields that we organically manage. Mm -hmm. um, and then so that's kind of the production side. So we have a 100-person CSA where people buy yep. a weekly basket um, up front, and then they get a basket of food that Andrea is so amazing at putting together. Mm -hmm. I'll say she's one of the best wash and pack station people that we've had. Um, and then we also sell to the dining halls, and we go to the Old North End Farmers Market yep. here. Um, so that's the production side. The education side is really the farmer training program is the biggest educational impact on that land. Like we run those fa those fields, um, so it's an amazing presence to have them there. And then we also have a lot of undergraduate classes come through that are actually totally based at the farm or just come down for labs or something. And then research, we have 15 research projects going on, which is amazing mm -hmm. to have the farmer training program students have direct access to that. You know, a lot of these are about invasive pests that are new to the area for vegetable production. We are part of that research wow. and the students get to see that. Um, so yeah, that land is really special and we're really fortunate to be, although it is sandy and if you farm, you'll know that Sandy so soil. Easiest. I came from loamy soils. I farmed in the Intervale for 15 years, mm -hmm. which are prime. Ag. Yes. Um, so if you can farm at our place, you can really farm, farm anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andrew, I want to toss that over to you a little bit. What What was it like being on um, the Catamount Farm and, and just this experience for you? Oh, so as a native Vermonter and a UVM grad, I had absolutely no idea that it was there. That the farm even <laughs> existed before I stepped foot on for my tour last mm -hmm. October. Um, and was just kind of like, this is here, this is amazing, and you drive in and there's vegetable production on one side and there's orchards on the other and you can see the hoop houses and the perennial fields are off in the corner and it's, you're just like, I'm in the middle of like a fully functioning farm ecosystem and it was very, very special. And you really were hands-on. You know, when we had the tour, you know, these are the different plots that you manage as part of the course, but you also have some of your own areas that you can focus on and do what you want to do. What was that like for you? Our personal plots yeah. were really fun. Yeah. Um, I was, the, the group of people that I was working near, everybody grew weird crops, like crops that you wouldn't necessarily see in production. So we had, like, my neighbor Allie had a cardine, and I grew an entire plot of, Mostly weeds. Um, but That's not true. <laughs> uh, okay, not true. so there were a lot of flowers in the middle, but they kind of got away from me. Um, and so it was just really a really great experiment on your own time and a little bit of a, a break from like being solely focused on production to kind of step back and see, like, this is how the process happens a little bit slower. Yeah. And something more personal that you're really interested in. Um, one of the things that I think is so important about this program that you touched on, Sarah, that I want to dive a little bit deeper into is the business side of farming. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think there's, right or wrong, there's somewhat um, almost, you know, idealistic about farming. And I want to work with my hands and the land and produce things yeah. to feed people. <laughs> it is, I think, one of the most challenging jobs in, in the world. And 
in order to be successful, you have to understand how to run the business side of it. And that's so important to this program. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. I mean, to be a farmer, one, you have to know how to grow crops, but you need to know how to drive a tractor if you're going to drive tractors, maybe fix a tractor, or at least know somebody you can trade vegetables or beef with or something that's going to know how to fix yeah. a tractor. You need to know, yeah, how to do farm financials. I mean, you can hire somebody to help you with bookkeeping, but you should understand the basics of what cash flow is and income expense statement. Um, and we do, you know, they have a, a assignment where you do a partial business plan. And uh, one of the things is come up with all, what's your farm that you want and what are all the startup costs? Because you got to put this in reality of like, how are you going to fund this? And, you know, as um, at least in Chittenden County, it's really hard to access farmland. So there's more um, creative land tenure relationships where people are leasing mm -hmm. land or somebody wants to put their farm in current use so they don't have to pay um, taxes at the full level. So they let some people come and farm. So we're, we try to help negotiate and um, find those opportunities. And mm -hmm. also we're here, like once you graduate, anybody who updates their business plan, we are here as staff to, Rachel and I, to mm -hmm. review it two, three, four years from there. And we actually, you know, down the line. And also we teach them how to do a soil fertility management plan. Like you look at a soil test and you might be like, what does this mean? Like, I don't know. So how do you amend your soil so it's most productive? Um, and then we also teach them how to do crop planning. Like literally, how do you, you know, you don't grow five beds of um, eggplants. Anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. of anything <laughs> if you don't have a market. So right, making right. it, um, putting it into reality. So we really yeah. do focus on the management side. And I think you also talk about, you know, building your own brand. You know, you can't yeah. just build it and think they will come. You have to yeah. understand marketing. Um, yes. And there's so many different facets of marketing. And yeah. and oftentimes, my experience with working in the food industry before being here at UVM is that it's oftentimes the farmer trying to do everything. Yeah. And so how do you help them navigate that responsibility of you are going to be the ones posting pictures on Instagram and also figuring out your crop planning and, and the one selling at the market too? Yeah. How do you help them navigate such responsibility? Right, that, that's a great question. And some people aren't going to want to go down that social media route, and that's okay. Like, they can, maybe they're going to market somewhere else. Like, maybe they're going to wholesale to a distributor, yep. and then yeah, they don't actually point. have to yep. do that marketing. Like, some people are people, people you know, people, yep. people. Yep. And some people aren't. And you really actually need to know that going mm -hmm. into farming. If you're not a people person, you don't want to be peop around people, you should not be going to farmer's market. Right. If you like that aspect, then great. So that's what we're trying to get them to think about inside their business plan. And not everybody's like, a lot of people, you can hire a bookkeeper to do payroll and to do your accounting. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. don't have to do that. But mm -hmm. so just what are, the, what are the skills you need to know and what can you actually hire out? Like there's some specialized equipment that it's going to be like a, um, that it's easier to hire another neighboring farmer for $100 an hour than go and buy that piece of equipment right. and learn how to use it. Right. So it's parsing those things out of, it's great to know how to do all those things, but right. you don't have to. So I think what I'm hearing, too, is just really giving students a creative, flexible solutions, you know, just yeah. thinking about the different ways to do yeah. it. And we, I want to pause for a second because we have a couple of different uh, questions coming yeah. in here. Um, it says, what percentage of students passed in perspective have a college degree? Uh, great question. Um, thank you, whoever asked that. Yes, it was Cooper. Thank Cooper. you, Cooper. Thank you, Cooper. <laughs> um, so... Not everybody has a college degree at all. So, the, so just to, um, you know, we, this year we had 19-year-old to 63-year-old in the program. Oh, great. And it was amazing. And a lot of people take this program who didn't want to go to college. Going to college was not um, like a mainstream matriculated um, program. It wasn't what they wanted. They wanted something hands-on. And then a lot of other people have gone to college mm -hmm. and maybe even have their master's degree. Mm -hmm. So we have people that knew they wanted to farm since they were a kiddo. And then some people who are total career changers, like a lot of IT people, especially your year, there was a lot of IT people that are like, get me out of this business. Right. Um, and the people in the back over here helping us with the <laughs> IT, if you want a new career, you can come over to the farmer training program. Um, we have an amazing uh, staff over here assisting in this webinar. So thank you. Um, so we have, and then we have some people in retirement that want to start a farm. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't actually know the percentage, but that is... Um, Definitely not everybody has a college degree. Yeah. I would say the majority do, but it's absolutely not 
um, necessary to come to this program. Well, and I think to your point too, it's it's a it's a lifestyle change essentially. And I would love to hear from you as too because it was it's a you grew up in this lifestyle from a farming family, mm -hmm. but you went to UVM for a, not a farming degree. Not you had all. not intended no. really to work in agriculture, and here you are, um, recent graduate, and thinking about how do you start your own small scale farm. So how how did that happen? Um. <laughs> I have a degree in recreation management, so I've been working in customer sewer service and helping other people have fun, yeah. um, which turns out when you're helping other people have fun, it really cuts back on your opportunities to get out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I needed a break from being nice to everyone all the time and uh, also kind of reevaluated my philosophy and the impact that I want to have on our planet and so farming brings me back to my roots connects me back with my family businesses and um, will hopefully help create a more sustainable community and then in the future hopefully I can bring together my hospitality experience and my agriculture experience and make something really awesome that sounds great um, we have a few more questions that I yeah. want to get to here because they're coming in fast and furious here. Um, let me just scroll back up because I don't want to miss them because there's so many. Um, so this is a great one from Thomas. Um, how much does technology come into play during the farmer training program? Great question, Thomas. And this came <laughs> up in your year a lot. That um, So I will be honest that Rachel and I are not tech savvy at all. Um, in your green with this. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the only techno like, technology of like, we use tractors. I'll teach you. That's what one of my specialties mm -hmm. is, is I teach tractor safety and mm. operation. Um, but that's probably not what you're referring to. Um, so there are new programs out there that help you with crop planning and mm -hmm. figuring out um, how much you need to be able to grow um, a certain, you know, to get a certain yield, how much bed feet do you need. And we have started to dabble with that, and we are going to invest in something called TEND, probably for next year, which does help with crop planning. Um, I think you're underselling the value of a simple spreadsheet, though. Yeah. Oh, yes, we do spreadsheets. We have lots of spreadsheets. <laughs> um, that you, you need to keep track of everything, like yields. If you're going to be certified organic, you need to keep track of what fertilizers, what seeds you use, cover crop seeds. Um, so we definitely use a computer. We're not like mm -hmm. using the cell phone yet to keep track. And honestly, the IT solutions are not fully out there yet. They're just coming out, believe it or not. It's for something for a small scale diversified. And I should say we mostly teach vegetable production, which I didn't say in our um, intro. So those technologies are just being produced um, and updated. They're really, there's a lot of technologies for when you have 200, 300 acres of one crop. But when you have 50 feet of something and then 200 feet of something else, that technology is still in development. Um, and we would actually love to, when it does come out, learn mm. how to use it. Yeah, and explore how to use it. Let's let's go into, um, and I think that we're getting some of the questions that I think will lead to some of the information here on the slide. Yeah. What will I gain from this program? You know, you've talked about um, business side, you've talked about crop planning, you've talked about um, food justice. So. You know, maybe just touch on some of these things here that we have in the slide. What are the things that, that you will, at the end of your six months, that you will walk out of this program feeling really confident that you can grasp? Do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer that? Yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, so, from like the practical, like I could step up to pretty much any tractor on any farm and look at it and be like, I understand the key components. I could safely get on this tractor, having known that it was in good working condition from the person who owns it, and operate it safely, which before this was something that I wasn't confident yeah. in. Um, so that like practical hands-on knowledge, along with like how to weed efficiently mm -hmm. and how to yeah. assess like what this row versus that row, how do I prioritize the needs of those two crops, and um, so those hands-on things, and then the more theoretical components of how do I make good decisions to be a effective, successful, yeah. successful mm -hmm. farmer and making sure that I'm taking into account my impact on our planet. We had so many conversations about the use of plastic and like 
if we were going to use plastic and why would we use plastic here and not here and like how can we possibly minimize our use and so just kind of being more critical about the decisions that we make to be better um, stewards of our land. Hmm. Sounds great. Thank you. Did, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Great. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. Let's. let's I will say one yeah. thing that we haven't touched on. It. I'm just looking at yeah, the notes sure. over there. Is you also will learn broiler chick, broiler chicken yes. um, operation. So from little baby chicks all the way to harvest of the chickens, um, and that you know it's a very small scale. We only raised I think 100 birds this year, um, but that's also included. In Great. Program. Thank you for sharing that as well. Yeah. Let's go back to a couple of the different questions. Um, this is a great question. Um, do we have placement support or elaborate on connections with land groups that may have available farmland um, for sale or lease, either in Vermont or New England? And I, and I love that question. I also want to tie yeah. back in um, what we haven't dived into yet about the, the partners that you go and see in yeah, the, in the visiting. And so I think that there's that may kind of intertwine because there's also yeah. relationships that are being built with farmers outside <clears throat> of just the farmer training program. So I'm going to answer your question yeah. first, and then who is that? That is Delilah, I think. Then Delilah, Delia, Delia. Delia. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we are so fortunate to be in such uh, an amazing ecosystem. farming yeah. community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and supportive farming community, yeah. right? Like in the organic and conventional vegetable grower community. I'm about to go to. A, I'm on the board of the vegetable um, veg and berry growers association. association. Yep. This Friday, and people <clears throat> collaborate. They want to yeah. share ideas. We have a listserv, and people will ask something like, "I've got." spotted wing, whatever it is, yep. some insect, like how are you managing it? And you know, everybody responds. And um, so when you're in this program, you get introduced to over 50 um, people within the food system. Yep. So like I said, farmers, um, agricultural extension agents, it took, you know, I've been farming for over, I think now 24, 25 years. It took me a couple of decades, like basically yeah. till I came to, to build those relationships to, yeah. to meet all yeah. these people and yeah. you get introduced yeah. to them. Yeah. You get a, such an amazing network. Yeah. And then to actually find, to Delilah's question, like how do you help find land? We don't necessarily help you find land, but we help you, you know what the resources are yeah. to find land. So yeah. there's this amazing, um, uh, uh, what's called, uh, land link, Vermont land link, that um, helps you with these uh, relationships if you don't have a lot of money to go buy yeah. land. What are these alternative yeah. kinds of relationships you can do to get farming? Yeah. So we're gonna introduce you to people all over um, the state, and then if you're not from Vermont, mm -hmm. we can give you the resources to help you go on from there. Right. Like, these are the people you're going to want to talk to. Like, we don't know everybody in the state, but they have mm -hmm. every state, right. we're a land-grant university, yep. every state has a land-grant university, and they have an extension program, and we'll help you navigate that. Awesome. Great. Hopefully that answered your question as well. Let me just go forward um, to that next slide here. Let me just see if we have a couple other questions that we can answer quickly. Um, I think this is a good one, too. Um, and Andrea's touched on this a little bit, too. Um, and I love that there was somebody um, 63 years old. So maybe this will give you confidence, Carolyn, because she says, can you discuss physical demands for the program, especially for older students over 20s? Uh, do you want me to take that? <laughs> so <laughs> Why don't I'll we both you. answer that? Yeah, Let's I'll hear what Sarah says, and I want to hear um, Andrea as um, well. Yeah. Yeah, I, our median age is usually uh, late 20s, early 30s. Um, and every year we usually have somebody 40s, 50s. This was the first time we had somebody in their 60s, um, which was great. And I will say, you know, it's ideal you can lift 50 pounds. Like, you're not going to have to lift 50 pounds all the time times, consistently. Right. consistently. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, that's okay. Like, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things we teach in the program, like, second week, we do a class on ergonomics. Um, and how to keep your body safe. And I know that, unfortunately, from personal experience, hurting myself farming. And I've learned how to make my body a lot safer and just everybody safer. Like, we don't, we don't want people lifting 50 pounds constantly. Like, if you, we try to do it ergonomically. So I think what, uh, you know, like, you are on your hands and knees a lot, but we can make some accommodations. Mm -hmm. um, and people get in shape, and we do a little core class at lunch where we work on building our core for 15 minutes um, to get people stronger. And we really mm -hmm. we really emphasize ergonomics. But um, I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, yeah. Carolyn, if there's yeah. more specific questions. There's what, more specific questions. What is your feedback on that? What was um, it like on your body? It was, so I come from restaurants, which is also right. very physically yes. demanding. Yeah, yes. um, so 
there are definitely days of hard work. You're out in the sun in July. It's hot. You need to remember to wear sunscreen and a hat yep. and drink a lot of water. But you're working in a team of like eight people. So if you need to take a break, the opportunity to take a break is there. And no one is going to, there's, it's such a supportive community that every, all of the students and all the faculty want you to succeed. So we all kind of work together to make sure that nobody is overtaxed yeah. and um, just great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Safe. Good. Thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you for that question, Carolyn. I want to um, answer one more question, then we're going to um, show a quick video here that was produced by one of our students who um, graduated in 2015, um, and he interviewed a few students. Unfortunately, Andrea wasn't in that video, but we get our live today. Um, so let's just answer this quick question from Frank. How many students are accepted uh, for each session, and how are the students chosen? H how yeah, is it tough to you. get in? Yeah. Um, thanks, Frank, for your question. So we um, generally, uh, it's around 25. The cohort's usually 20 to 25, max is 25. Um, what we're really looking for, the most important thing, is that you um, can work in a community. So we want people that like being around other people, because you know this isn't like a college class where you see people for three hours a week and that's it. You're with the same people 35 hours a week for six months straight, 35 to 40 hours a week. Um, so, and we do a lot of, um, a lot of community building in the first few weeks. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. Second is, you know, that we want you to be interested in, you don't, not everybody that comes into the program actually wants to farm. A lot of people want to go into agricultural education, mm -hmm. or maybe they want to do food justice work, or have a, mm -hmm. like a Airbnb or farm, whatever, a bed and breakfast that has a little farm, or they just want a homestead. So it's all kinds of people. Um, and it's good if you have some experience coming into the program farming, um, but it's not 100% critical. Um, whenever some people come in with four or five years experience, they're going to get a different level out of the program, right? Everybody gets different things out of the program mm -hmm. because they're at different points in their life. Right. And we, we welcome everybody. Um, you apply to the program, uh, which we'll show a link in a little bit, and then um, Rachel or I will interview you. It's a really friendly process over the phone, or if you're local, we do it in person. But to be honest, it, it is competitive. It is competitive. It, it, it is competitive. So, it is and it's one of the only programs in the country like this. And so, if it is something that you are interested in doing, then we highly recommend you get in your application, you start yeah. having conversations and, and, and working up and, and exploring what this might look like for you. Because there, we will fill the program, and yeah. um, there will be folks that unfortunately won't, won't be able to get into the session. So, I just encourage you. You, that if this is something that you're considering to um, to not wait yeah. um, and let's pause for a moment because I want to show this video um, done by Jack Dempsey thank you so much Jack I wish and it'd be wonderful you if you were joining us today but um, he put this together um, I think he came um, maybe in September or October it was towards the end of the season and um, interviewed several of our students and um, really gives a great perspective um, from the angle of the cameras from the drone um, as to the space that you will be working in. So we're going to turn off microphones for a minute and let you listen to this wonderful video. Getting my hands dirty, actually like seeing where food is produced and learning so much. It's really intended to give you the, like, the broadest possible view on what agriculture is and what sustainability means. That's been really valuable. Food is an area that deserves all of our attention. I came in not knowing if I wanted to be a farmer and I think that's okay too because by the end of six months outdoors and working with soil and plants, it might change what you want to do. It's like a, an incredible opportunity, incredible exposure to so many different viewpoints and models and people and backgrounds, uh, I would recommend it 100%. This was the first step. I'm learning. Hopefully that perspective of um, the land, 
um, what students uh, kind of feel about the program, you know, the outcomes. Um, I think that's um, really, really important to be able to see that. So let's let's since you've just seen it, and so hopefully you're interested in being in that space, that physical space. Mm -hmm. Walk us through, because I know you get this question um, yeah. probably every time about yeah. the program. You know, and I have up on the slide kind of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, just walk us through. What is a week like? Yeah, and I think it is really important to talk about what a week in life is looks like because that tells you if you're actually going to really this is enjoy for you. the program. Yep. Um, so Monday morning we get there first thing and we do a field walk. So we go and assess every field of what tractor work needs to be done, what needs to be harvested, what needs to be weeded. And that's really understanding the management of the farm. Like you can go work on a farm and go harvest and weed, but if you don't understand why those decisions were made, so that's why we do that field walk and we come up with a priority board. Um, and then the rest of Monday and Tuesday after that field walk, we um, work in the fields. And what they do, what students do is they work through rotations. Um, so for one month, you're with me. And I'm going to teach you tractor safety and operation and also the environmental considerations of using tractors. Um, when you're with Rachel, the other co-director, you're going to learn um, harvest, wash, pack, station, and sell to the CSA. When you're with Jay, She'll be teaching you wash, pack, harvest, also, and going to the farmer's market. And then Ava teaches you irrigation um, systems, transplanting, and, and direct seeding. And then there's another perennial, learning the orchards and the vineyards. So folks rotate around. Rotate yeah. around, mm -hmm. and you have really <clears throat> intense experience. You know, you get mm -hmm. to learn it hands-on. Ideally, at the end of the rotation, the instructor of that rotation is somewhat obsolete, that you can go out and take a tractor and without necessarily me being right there, you can put that equipment on by yourself. Mm. I mean, I'm here if you need me. Right. Um, so that's Monday and Tuesday. You get hands on. Wednesday, um, half the the morning, we ha or for the morning, we do classes. So um, like I said, we have over 50 instructors and all those curricular threads that we talked about earlier. The rest of the day, we do more field work. Thursday, we partner with these amazing rotation um, partner farms. Yep. Where you go, so if you harvested on the farm on Tuesday, you'll stay there on Thursday. But everyone else, for a month, you go visit these other farms, uh, local farms, that are teachers in their own right. Amazing yeah. farmers yeah. and teachers. So Adams Berry Farm, yeah. which is organic, uh, berry, they have strawberry, blueberry, raspberries. Intervale Community Farm, they were the first CSA yeah. farm here in Vermont. Um, Bread and Butter Farm, they have, they raise a lot of, uh, they have beef cattle. Mm -hmm and uh, layer hens and pigs and then they also do vegetable production and they also have amazing community yeah, they do all events. kinds of community yeah. events such a like, great opportunity for yeah. hospitality to weave yeah. in there so mm -hmm. they really do like they yeah. host burger night and everything yeah. um and then the farm between which is um a perennial farm and that sells perennial um fruits like currants and mm -hmm. elderberries um, but they also do a ton of work for pollinators. So they'll, when you go to each farm, you're going to have an hour lesson. So like John and Nancy Hayden from Farm Between, they're going to go out and teach you, like you're actually going to do insect identification. Mm -hmm. Or if you go to Adams Berry Farm, you might do a class on um, value added. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the day, you work side by side. So with it's them. a really, in, yeah, with the farmers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a really interesting component. Students really enjoy that piece because you get to really know those other farmers. And then Friday you come back and we have an assessment, which is basically like a test, but it's not graded. So, um, and we, it, you know, at the beginning of the year, it's really basic questions like, what's the difference between sand, soil, and clay soils? And then we really move into farm management questions like, your soil's compacted. How do you know that by looking at the soil? Mm -hmm. How do you know that looking at the plant? And what are you going to do to fix it? And then immediately after the assessment, we go over it in small groups. And it's really where we connect what you learn in the field to what you learn in the classroom. And people have a lot of aha moments like, oh, I get this now, like what this means. Um, and then the rest of Friday, we work um, in the field. A little different from year year, personal plot time is going to be on people's own time so that we have more time in, the, in our fields. Mm -hmm. um, and the program's 8.30 to 4 or 8 to 4, depending on mm -hmm. what rotation. And then Friday, you get out at 2.30. Mm -hmm. So people, a lot of people work in the right. service industry. So it allows them to work. And I should just say, it's like super fun. I have the best job ever. Like, I absolutely love my job. You do. I love getting to meet all these amazing folks that come through the program. Um, so we do try to, to make it fun. What was your um, favorite day, if there was one? Um, or maybe what was the favorite farm that you visited? You know, I feel oh, like that's, that's such a really great experience <laughs> to learn from all of these different farmers. The favorite farm that I visited was the farm between John and Nancy Hayden. Um, they're... 
their philosophy, their land philosophy is so different from any other farmer that I've ever had the opportunity yeah. opportunity to like mm-hmm. chat with. That it like their love and obsession about making their land as healthy as possible, and then and then thinking about production is just this huge Very. flip from the production farms that I grew up on. And so yeah, it was eye-opening and, like, and inspiring. Cha- that, it changed yeah. the way that I've thought about the way, what I will do moving forward. Wow. Yeah. What an amazing impact. I hope you go back and share that with them <laughs> because I bet they would really be pleased to hear that. Um, I, I am seeing that we've lost a few questions that were in earlier. So if there's something that and, – and, and, again, I see new ones coming in. So if there was something that you had asked previously and I hadn't gotten to it, please do feel free to um, pop it back in there. We are having some of the program logistics um, starting to come up as well. And let me just um, pause um, and answer a few questions here. Frank says, being respectful of the importance of full commitment to the team, please discuss flexibility of time away. Specifically, is it acceptable to take a week off for vacation? Yeah. Great question. Yeah, thanks, Frank. So um, we do expect that you're there, but you do have eight personal days. Um, so you can take those whenever However, you want yeah. throughout the whole program. And of course, we understand medical needs and that kind of thing. But we, um, to be able to graduate from the program, you do need to attend. Um, we do, you know, ask that you're typically there 8.30 to um, 4, unless mm-hmm. you have these other requirements. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there is flexibility for people to take a week off for sure. Mm. Um, another great question here um, from Cooper again is, who pows greenhouse management a topic of instruction? Yeah. Great question, Cooper. So. We do go over it somewhat. I do have to say, though, that just to be honest, that you know the program starts May fourth. Thank you for yep. putting that up there. <laughs> um, May fourth. So a lot of what we already have started in the greenhouse has already been going since March. Um, you will get some time in the greenhouse. Um, there's just not enough curriculum to start the whole program. There's not enough hands-on work to start in March. Um, but you will get some hands-on experience in the greenhouse for sure, and high tunnel production definitely. So we do have uh, high tunnel tomatoes, and we also um, our kale is amazing. You should come get some um, that we're still growing as a, you know over through the winter. Um, so you will get some seeding direction and talk about the basics, but there is not honestly as much hands-on experience um, as you would get in the field. And so um, Charlie says, does the curriculum allow for students to also explore something specific yes. they're interested yes. in? Yeah, Great I love that question. Great question, Charlie. Yeah, so we totally encourage you to, if you're into sheep farming, for example, we've had a few people that are really into sheep dairies, and that we don't do that at all, and I can't teach on that because I don't, don't know that personally. We will connect you with those people, and you should know that we, every student is connected with a mentor, so one of the staff, and we meet with you at least three times individually throughout the entire program. And we have office hours, so anybody can meet with any of us. And we really do try to connect people to their interests. We also have an independent project, everybody mm-hmm. has to do, um, where you can focus in on, it's, you know, it's at the end of the program, you present it to us. Um, and people have like designed pr- uh, gardens for prisons or like mm-hmm. did um, dyes, um, like at you did. Food, at no, a, oh, oh, no, oh, oh, Allie did, right, 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 sorry. Yeah. Um, um, I was thinking of the handkerchief you got from her and you wore it all the time. Um, so there's all, yes, we'll definitely let you look in your own interest. And some people will actually take a few days off to go work at other farms that they're super interested in. It's, so. again, that networking, that yeah. opportunity. Back to your point, almost 25 years of farming. In six months, you're going to get a collection yeah. of network of farmers that yeah. you have built basically over the last 25 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, y- you can't get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you're going to get that in six months. And yeah, so it's pretty. really an amazing opportunity. And I have been to so many of those different farms that you're talking about. And yeah. and the quality of the, of, the, of the farm and the passion and the knowledge that these people have is just such an incredible yeah. opportunity to learn from them. So I want to move on just for a second um, to make sure, and I know we have a question um, as well about international students. Yes. Um, have you had international students? Is that an we option? We have yeah. had international students, unfortunately, because the, we would love to have more. Um, unfortunately, because this is a non-credit program, um, international students are not allow, are, are not um, eligible for student visas. So every international student we have had has already had already been in either the country or they already had a visa right. that they could get in on. 
So I'm really sorry about that. It's such a bummer because we have a lot of international yeah. students who are very interested, interested in this program. Yep. Um, yeah. Great. Well, thank you for answering that. Yeah. And, and thank you for asking that question because it's a really important one to consider. Um, so let's go back to some of these. And, and I'm absolutely keeping an eye. Please, if there's something we have not answered yet, please put it in there. Um, these are the kind of questions that you get most often. And mm -hmm. I, I, we've talked about what is the typical um, week on the farm. Let's get into some of these yeah. other ones because yeah. I think these are really important too. You made mention that sometimes people work in hospitality, so they're out on yeah. Friday afternoon. It, you know, people ask, this is six months. You know, this yeah. is six months that I'm picking up and I'm often moving across the country because right. you have students from all over the place. We do. Um, yeah. So how, how does, can someone yeah, work? Yes, most 70%, I think a year, year even more, yeah. um, people work during the program. So we really do, if that is something you need or want yeah. to do, we, we totally honor that. Um, some people, every year we have one or two people that work full time through the program, and wow. I would not suggest that, honestly. People do it. Um, but I suggest more like 15 to 20 hours. Yeah. How mm -hmm. much were you working? I'm, you were like one of the so randomly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So we and you know that's why we let people out at two thirty. Um, a lot of people get jobs in the service industry, or a lot of people will come and can actually work remotely and keep their job yeah. part time right. as they work. We have a lot of people doing that. Talk about housing. You know, it, it's housing. for some. You know, not everybody's yeah. from Vermont, and so um, a lot of people move here and need yeah. to kind of pick up. And 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 it's an incredible place to move to. So I'm not discouraging that at all. Um, and there is housing available, but it's something yeah. that you need to figure out. It is, and we we do help you with that. So there's something that's um, amazing here called Front Porch Forum. So every um, town in Vermont has Front Porch Forum. It's a community listserv. So we put it out on all the surrounding towns looking for housing for students May to October. And we get so many offers, yep. and we put it on um, a website called Blackboard. It's our interface. For our students, yeah. yep. Um, and you can, I mean, we're not going to call the landlords for you, but you, or landladies, um, <clears throat> but we create this whole list, and we have them calling us back, like, nobody contacted us. So we, Lots of options. There's abundance, and it tends to be slightly cheaper than what you're going to find on Craigslist. So you can expect, like, I mean, if you want a one-bedroom studio apartment downtown Burlington, that's going to be very expensive. Right. Um, but these more house share type things, like five hundred to eight hundred dollars yeah. a month. Great, awesome. And I should just say, with that, with yeah. you know, food, you get to take food when there's abundance, which there's often always. abundance. You get to take vegetables that's home. You really get good all point. the food out of your personal pot. But also, we always have leftover food, and then we end up taking a bunch to the food shelf. We have an amazing. I should have mentioned that as a partnership. We have a really great connection with the food shelf. We actually grow specific vegetables just for them and harvest it for mm -hmm. the food shelf, and then we. Um, we bring our, our excess there. And then we also do apprenticeships with local food justice organizations. So if you want to do that, instead of your independent project, we work with Migrant Justice, which is works with migrant farm workers. Um, then the food shelf, um, a lot of people cooked for the food truck, which is basically a the good food truck, which is mm -hmm. um, a truck that goes to low-income neighborhoods and provides free meals. So there's all those opportunities. Super, a lot of opportunities yeah. to gain other experience. And I think that's yeah. what this program isn't just about farming. Yeah. Um, and there's just so many different facets that you're going to be able to learn out of this program. Um, let's also talk about, um, well, let's segue into opportunities. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a great question right. here too because, you know, as you're thinking about what you're going to do and as we've seen other students, um, what they've gone on to do, what are the opportunities um, after this program? So as I, you're getting lots of emails from me right now. So we have tons of people, farmers mm -hmm. or other food system organizations mm -hmm. sending um, requests myself, and job. Yeah, requests, yeah. like we have these job opportunities yeah. and we send it out. Like even in a few months, you're going to be getting more, but it's usually like one, two, three, four a week at this yeah. point. Um, so there are jobs out there for sure. Um, you know, if you want to start in farming right after the program, come November, that might be a little difficult because it's getting into winter here unless you go out to California or Florida mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. um, but come March or April, if you want a farm job, yeah. you're definitely going to be able to get it. And um, the great thing about doing the farmer training program, people in Vermont know it. And, in, 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 you know, in yeah. nationally, and nationally yeah. absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And we are great references. So, um, yeah, they definitely having this in your um, – in your past helps mm. you to, to get jobs. And that's a great response because I know there was a question earlier yeah. that was asked that I think um, I just unfortunately kind of um, went away when we showed the video that was um, does this program and this um, certificate and certification in this program um, 
help you when you're looking for jobs? And I see Andrea going, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, farm, farm owners, farmers, they, when they see the farmer training program on your, they know that you've learned skills beyond just a basic farm laborers. So they know right. that they can trust you to have a position of responsibility. And um, they, yeah. There's a lot of credi credibility behind this program. It is. Yeah. We've, we've had people get really amazing jobs after this program, like their dream job. Like we had um, the year before you, one of our students um, became the manager. Like she was really interested in food justice and mental health with farming. Mm. And she um, is working, one of the managers at Farm Aid now, which is one of the top organizations doing mental health work um, for farmers. So just, you know, and yep. that I'm sure the farmer training program helped her get that job, which was she's so happy that's awesome yeah. and I'm sure there we would have a long list of yeah, yeah. student success yeah. stories yeah. Um, so if you want to join that cohort and have that experience yeah. here is some of the information to register for the program I know we've had some questions um, come in the chat box and thank you Kelly so much for answering those um, because the application is open right now and and yeah. Saraz and, and Rachel are, are actively receiving and reviewing applications um, there is a there is a deadline um, for the application, and there's also a deadline yeah. for that final payment. And so, why don't you just walk us through uh, that yeah, a little bit? Yeah, thank you. So, um, really, applications once we're full, we are full, which typically happens in February uh, or March. Um, our early um, registration or early application deadline is December fifteenth. Mm -hmm. So, if you get into the program, it guarantees you a spot. Um, so it doesn't get taken. So that's yeah. coming up quickly, December 15th. Um, so once you apply to the program, Rachel and I get back to you within a, like a day or two, set up an interview. Usually within right. a week, you have an interview. We do rolling admissions. So within two, one to two weeks of mm -hmm. your um, interview, you'll have an answer. Great. And then you have, you have to put down an $800, $850 deposit mm -hmm. to secure your spot, non-refundable. And then the full cost of the program is due by April 13th. Great. That, thank you very much for that. And I do see other questions. So let's get back to some of these questions that we have coming in. Um, Caitlin says, speaking of applications, how long after the application deadline of twelve fifteen may applicants expect to hear whether or not they've been accepted? So we, you know, it usually really soon. Oh yeah. yeah. If there, if you apply after the interview, it's within a week usually, unless we're on if there's a vacation or something. But usually, yeah, yeah very timely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So because you want to plan. Yeah. Obviously, because May yeah. will come hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel like it right now as it's snowing. But, um, and so you want to plan. So you want to know. And so they're very mindful of that, that you need to pick up and you need to um, and you know move to Vermont or find housing in the Burlington area. Andrea asked, do you folks get involved in agricultural global development? Great question. Um, it's actually, a, I've... I've personally traveled to a bunch of places in the world and have, it's an interest of mine, but honestly, we don't cover it that, like, hardly at all in the program. When we have had international students, we always mm, yeah, ask, ask if they want learn. to, mm -hmm. if they want to share um, how agriculture is done where they live. We always love that perspective, um, but we don't cover it so much in mm. the program. Okay, great. Thank but you, you could focus on it for your independent project if you Oh, that's a great solution. Um, Charlie says, how much time is spent on the business of farming and the different types of profitable business models like small-scale sustainable farming? Yeah, so we have a four-part series on business planning and farm financials. Um, so it's like, I guess that would be, it's nine hours of class altogether. And then we also bring other speakers. That's just one person from Agricultural Extension that does that whole series. And then we have other classes like Richard Wiswell, who just wrote an amazing book. Ta like teaches you hands-on, okay, you want to do a layer operation, chicken layer operation, what are all your expenses and what are you actually going to make? And if wow. you're not having hundreds, I'm just going to give you the answer right now, if you're not doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds, it's not going to be profitable. So how do you look at the financials and is that crop profitable or is it not? Or at what point would it be? At what point? Yeah. yeah. At yeah. what scale yeah. would yeah. it be? Mm -hmm. At small scale, it's it's just. I mean, I have layer hens in my yard because I like it and it's fun. My kids like it, but it's not. We break even, but it's fun. <laughs> um, so let's amazing. also talk about um, uh, how much in sales did Catamount make last year? Oh, interesting. Just getting a feel of the scale um, of the farm operation. 
Oh, such a good question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> um, Rachel really does that. It was, um, oh, you're so good. It's, wasn't it like 40? You know what? 40, Why don't we get back to you on that? Yeah. Because I think that's a it great, yeah. It was around 40,000, but I can't remember. It's 40 to 50,000. I don't remember. I don't know the exact number for last year, but that's typically what. It is. And and I'll ask um, Kelly and our team to put up our email address um, in the chat box as well. So any of these questions that you want for more information and a little bit further, please email us because this you, is, we would love to provide more information. And you can email me directly to at right. farmer at uvm.edu. Awesome questions. Yeah. And so a few more questions coming in here, and then we're going to wrap up in, in just a couple minutes. Um, uh, Frank asks, in reference to opportunities during the program, have previous students been involved with Farm to Table? Are there local mm -hmm. restaurants that work with you? Um, well, not really. I mean, there are tons of farm to table right. restaurants Right, there's a, a, a out ample here. opportunities. And yeah. honestly, so I um, co-owned a farm for 15 years, um, Diggers Mirth Collective Farm in the um, in the Intervale, and we worked with a lot of um, amazing farm to table, like American Flatbread, um, Trattoria Delia. Anyways, the we as at Catamount Farm, we don't actually want to displace any of the local farmers, so we really try to market mostly to the UVM community. Um, we were asked to do that farmers market, so we joined. But we don't. Um, the reason we don't do farm to tables, we just don't want. Yeah, there's um, a lot of other farmers doing that yeah. currently. Yeah, and we yeah. don't want to compete with them. There are, if you are interested in farm to table, we can definitely hook you up, and we talk about it for sure because there's Lots Burlington is such a yeah. hub for that. Um, Charlie asked, are there farms that we get to visit and work um, with typically, uh, are they open about their financials and their business models? Yeah, um, yeah thanks Charlie. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the farmers that we work with on rotation are incredibly transparent. Transparent to the point where they show you their profit and losses. Wow. So that That's you, unusual, right? It's very unusual and it also kind of sets you up for, um, I like, at the farmer's market and I got a little bit overzealous and I started asking some kind of invasive questions to a prickly Vermont <laughs> farmer because I was so accustomed yeah. to talking to these farmers yeah. in the farmer training program that were just like really open. so yeah. open and this guy got like really hostile and I was like and that's right. why we work with these particular farmers because we right. want you know that they're going to share, they're gonna and, share and, and that's part of and they they want the, people to yeah. learn you know yeah, they're yeah, in yeah. this together with you mm -hmm. to see yeah. farming continue and be successful yeah. Yeah. and all the farms we work with are totally open about their practices their financials um, some of them even the classes they'll teach you in your small groups when you go there on rotation will be on their financials specifically. Um, we have a comment here that says as it is a non credit course someone with a tourist visa can study. Interesting. So I can't endorse that. Yeah. But sure. Let's find out. Let's, well, let's explore that. And technically, then, you're not yeah. supposed to, but um, we don't know how you got here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and if you join us, then we'll be happy to see you. Um, so if there's any other questions, um, you know, I'm happy to kind of keep an eye out for them. Thank you so much um, for these amazing questions yeah, today. Definitely. We've had a really active group. Um, and, and as Sarah was mentioning, too, um, in her email, thank you, Kelly, for putting both um, our learn email and the farmer um, email for UVM as well. Um, please ask additional questions. If there's something specific that you want to know, because really the hope is to um, have you join the program and, and have an amazing experience um, as well. Is there something I just, you want to I just want to yeah. also say if anybody out there wants to talk to me individually, I'm happy I talk to prospective students. If you're actually here in Vermont, I mean, I'll give you a tour on cross-country skis or snowshoes right at this time of year. Um, I'd be happy to show you the farm and the classroom and all the tractors that I love. Um, so yeah, reach out. Yeah, I'm, please. I'm more than happy to talk to you. And I want to end, um, Andrea and I had had a nice conversation the other day about why you did this program and why you would recommend it. So I want to always end and give students maybe um, a little aspiration here as to um, why you would do this. Why, why would you recommend this program? I don't think that there's any other place, well, there's one other place in the country that you could probably get a similar type of education, the mix of hands-on practical knowledge and the theory behind it. Um, to launch into, for me, which is a totally new industry. Um, there's just no place that you could possibly get that wealth of knowledge in such a short period of time, plus all of the connections and community that you create while you're here. I know that I've made like lifelong friends and I've made, I have 
trusted advisors in my life that I didn't have before this. That's Aww. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, Andrea, you. for joining us Thank today you. and your perspective. I really appreciate it. I always love hearing about our programs and sharing this amazing information with folks too. So thank you everyone for joining us. This will this is recorded as Kelly has noted in the notes and we will share this via email coming um, probably in a week or so. Um, but as Sarah has um, shared with you, please follow up with any questions. And if you are considering there is that December 15th deadline that's um, uh, really admissions. about a week okay. and a half from now for early admissions. And as we've mentioned, the program does fill every year. Uh, it is competitive, so if it's something you're considering, uh, please don't wait. And we look forward to seeing you this coming May. Have a great afternoon.